What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire and I post college videos, travel videos, that sort of thing here on my YouTube channel. And today is a super exciting but kind of sad day because I'm officially posting my last college related video ever. I just recently graduated from USF, the University of South Florida. Where with a degree in mass communications with a concentration in broadcast production. That was back in May, 2023. It is currently September, 2023. And my USF journey began back in fall of 2021, which if you're looking up USF pros and cons videos right now, you may have already seen my first one that I put out back in December of 2021 after my first semester at USF. I just wanna preface this video by saying some of the things that I'm gonna say in this video are going to be similar to what I said in that first video. Video. However, because I have now four semesters under my belt instead of just one, I have totally different perspectives. I also lived on campus this last year for my senior year, so I can speak a little bit more to campus life and everything in this video when I wasn't able to before. Everything that I'm about to say is all just my own opinion, and it's totally okay if you have a different opinion. Honestly, if you have a different opinion and you want to share it with me in the comments, please do. I'm always interested to see and hear other people's perspectives. With that being said, let's just go ahead and get right into the cons. We're gonna start with cons because I like ending on a positive note, you know? Okay, so con number one is that the campus dining actually sucks. I know that no college student is ever raving about their dining hall food, but I think USF's might be a bit below average. I went to a different school my freshman year, the University of Southern California, and I didn't love the food by any means. However, I definitely enjoyed it a lot more than I did USF's. I just never ever craved anything that USF had. Like it was more just kind of like, ugh, I have to use my swipes. What I think is even worse than that is the fact that a lot of the restaurants on campus, we have like a Chick-fil-A, Panera, Moe's, Panda Express, like a bunch of Starbucks. They almost never taste the same as they do like in the real world, if that makes sense. When I'm really craving like, a pumpkin cream cold brew from Starbucks. If I go to the Starbucks on campus, there's a very high likelihood that I will get that drink and not even drink half of it before I throw it away because it just it tastes off. I've never had a good Starbucks drink from an on-campus Starbucks. I will say the worst ones, in my opinion, in terms of like how they just taste off, Panda, Moe's, and Starbucks, but the Chick-fil-A on campus is typically pretty good. Panera isn't too bad either. And I'd say the subways are relatively the same too. And then just one other thing about dining on campus, the lines can be extremely long, especially during like lunchtime or during those transition periods between classes. The lines can get so long that you might be waiting 20, 30 minutes for food. And I felt like I wasted so much time just sitting around waiting. And there is an online service like through Grubhub that you can order your meals ahead of time. But in my experience, it was kind of glitchy. And so sometimes I would try to order or it would say go through and then it would cancel on me, but I had already walked all the way there. Overall, like don't, let me completely discourage you. It wasn't absolutely terrible. Like if you have to get a meal plan, by all means, like it's not that awful, but it's just kind of a pet peeve. Moving on, con number two centers around advising. I wanna preface this by saying that in no way, shape or form do I blame my advisor or any of the advisors on USF's campus. I just think because USF is such a large school, there are not enough advisors for the number of students that USF has. And so that ended up causing issues like for me. The only reason I graduated in May is because I was like, on top of my shit. <laughs> and I was checking my degree works constantly, making sure that all of my requirements were met. I didn't think I had to take a civics class in order to graduate because that wasn't one of the rules. However, there's something that came into effect after I started at USF that made it so I would have to take a civics class, but I didn't work that into my schedule. So thankfully I caught it and I was able to take a CLEP exam and somehow I passed it. But if I wanted to pass that exam, I wouldn't have been able to actually graduate. I, I just was never told. I I guess about that requirement being put on me. All big schools probably have this issue, but I guess my advice would be to just consistently check those requirements just because you never know what's gonna happen. Con number three centers around the campus mail center. I understand it's a college campus. There are so many people ordering so many different things. However, I feel like there were a few times where I would go to pick up a package after it said delivered on Amazon, like earlier in that morning, I'd go in the evening and it still wouldn't be ready for me to pick it up just because the mail center hadn't organized it all yet. There was also another time where they gave my package to somebody that wasn't 
me. Thankfully, the guy reached, like, found my email. My USF email was like, hey, Claire, I have your package. But apparently they had lost his package too. So he was hoping that I maybe ended up with his, but I didn't. And then towards the end of my final semester at USF, I stopped receiving the like text notifications that I was supposed to be getting whenever I got packages. And whenever I asked them if they could like help me fix that, they're like, oh yeah, the system just doesn't really work that well sometimes. And moving on to comment number four, parking on campus really sucks. Towards the beginning of the semester when everyone actually goes to class, because towards the end of the semester, people will not be in classes. But at the beginning of the semester, you are guaranteed to see full parking lots from like probably nine to three. Like if you get to campus after 9 a.m., like good luck finding a spot. Like you're gonna have to circle until somebody finally backs out and deal with people honking at you, getting ticked off because everyone's running late to class. So that's a bit of a pain in the butt if you're commuting to campus. But then also with that being said, I lived on campus during my senior year. I lived in my sorority house. In order to park near the Delta Gamma house, you have to purchase our parking or resident parking. It does not allow you to park near the academic buildings. So I would have to, walk, which isn't a huge deal. I really like to walk and it was fine with me. But on the days that it was like super rainy or I had to carry, like I was a mass communication major. So I always had camera equipment that I'd have to carry. If I had to carry that equipment, like the mile walk back home like that, that just sucked. Con number five, this one is relatively niche and like personal. So I'm gonna make it really quick, but this is just kind of like a heads up in general. If you are a senior, you're about to graduate and you live in Greek village on campus housing, just know that you can't, cannot get out of your contract even after graduating. Whenever I signed the lease during my junior year, I signed it, but I made sure I was like talking to the people in housing and I was like, hey, like, by the way, I'm graduating at the end of next year, but it says that the lease goes until August, goes through July. Will I be able to get out of it on the grounds of graduating? And they pulled up the contract and there's a little clause in there. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. That says you can cancel your housing contract due to graduation. They're like, yeah, you'll be, you'll be just fine. No problem. Well, I ended up moving into the house. It was great. Then my final semester came around and I was like, okay, I need to get out of this. And they decided not to let me. So essentially there's some sort of special rule in Greek village. The sororities occupying the houses have to pay for the houses year round. So if I were to leave, then Delta Gamma would be charged the $2,100 that I would not be paying. And so for that reason, my sorority didn't let me out of the lease because they couldn't afford to pay that. So I essentially had to keep my room at the Delta Gamma house over the summer whenever I was told that I wouldn't have to and I didn't live there. So kind of stinks. Just learn from my mistake. If you're gonna live in Greek Village as a senior, just know that you won't be able to get out of your contract just due to graduating. Okay, so that wraps up my cons list. Next, we are on to the pros. Pro number one. Probably the biggest pro that I have to say is the study abroad opportunities at USF. I studied abroad during the summer between my junior and senior year. I spent three weeks in Europe with a group of people in my major. So my study abroad was major specific, but I know that there are so many that are like more general where you can go take your GEs or whatever abroad. A bunch of girls actually in my sorority just did that this last summer, like a huge group of them, which Looks like they had so much fun. Everyone says this, but it was literally the greatest experience of my life. Like I had so much fun. I actually applied to a bunch of major specific scholarships and I got my study abroad entirely paid for just through applying for these scholarships, which was so freaking nice. If you think study abroad is something you can't afford, like look into it early for sure and do what you can, like talk to people. There, There's a study abroad office that can probably help you find scholarships. Talk to people in your major. Look for scholarships in your school. You'll likely be able to find something that can help you fund your study abroad. I totally recommend it. Pro number two is the coffee shops that are in and around USF. I fell in love while I was at USF with a coffee shop called Provisions. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've likely seen me at Provisions or heard me talk about Provisions. Got my cutie little drink. She's so cute. It's a super cute little coffee shop. The people there are super friendly. Their drinks are really good. They all, they make their own syrups. I'm actually kind of jealous because this year they just got a new buddy brew in the brand new honors college building on campus. And they have multiple Starbucks, which 
I don't really recommend those Starbucks. But there's a Starbucks not too far away on campus if you do have a car. It's the Fletcher and Telecom Starbucks. I love that Starbucks. It has so much natural light. Like I'm a sucker for natural light. So I would sit there and do my work so often. I was actually just there the other day and I ran into literally five girls that I knew. So many people from USF go there. And then there also is a foxtail coffee that just opened near USF, actually right by that Starbucks I was just telling you about. Overall, there's no shortage of good coffee shops that you can go to to study, just hang out, get some good coffee around USF. Pro number three is the Greek life on campus. I spoke on this a little bit more in my previous video, but I truly loved the size of the Greek life on campus. And I love that it was able to get me out of my comfort zone and get me to make some friends really quickly right when I started at USF, because like I mentioned, I was a transfer student. I definitely ended up becoming less involved in my sorority during my senior year, just because I got really involved with my major and just like, preparing for life outside of college. I really do think it's the perfect size because it's not so small that you don't have a house or anything, but it's also not so massive that you don't know every single girl in your sorority. And even though I did share the con that I had about living in Greek Village as a senior, I will say one huge perk of being in a sorority is the fact that you have the opportunity to live in what I believe is the cheapest on-campus housing. It's probably gone up now, but I think I paid like $6.87 a month to live in the DG house. Being in a sorority has actually given me a lot of opportunities even now. Like for example, a girl in my sorority heard about a job opportunity and then she reached out to me and I'm still working in that job to this day. Like it's actually about my year anniversary now. I do videography for a landscaping company here in Tampa. They're called Soho Landscape. Definitely go check out their socials because that's that's all me, I post it all. There also really is never a shortage of things to do when you're in a sorority. There's always like intramural games, some sort of philanthropy event, you go out, like whatever. There's always something to do when you're in a sorority. Pro number four is that USF has what I believe to be an amazing education. It provided me with an amazing education. This might be a little bit more major specific, but I could seriously film a whole other video about how much I freaking loved my major. I was again, a mass communication major, so I did a bunch of really cool like videography stuff. Like the reason this video actually looks good quality is because I'm filming it on like a really extensive camera that I purchased because of my major. I learned so many tangible things. I learned how to do so many awesome things with my camera. I learned how to fly a drone. I am now a drone pilot because of a class that I took on USF's campus. I have experience working with cinema cameras. I have experience working with a huge digital LED law, LED wall. I really do think that the mass communication program at USF is a hidden gem. I didn't know what I wanted to be whenever I came into USF. I didn't even know what mass communication was. My advisor was just like, oh yeah, you have enough credits to be a mass communication major. Do you wanna be one? And I was like, sure. Turns out it's everything that I love. There's like a journalism side and then a production side. And I learned that I love production. I love everything about video editing, shooting, just all of that stuff. I love it so much. I'm very grateful for the Z School for allowing me to figure that out. Also, my professors, so incredible. The people I met in my major, so incredible. Like the staff at USF, the Z School, so incredible. Like everyone, they're, they're all friends now. Like I genuinely consider all of them to be friends. Pro number five is that Florida is great. This might be pretty obvious, but the Tampa Bay area is seriously so incredible. Like I live in St. Petersburg now, just across the bridge, and I love it here. Like I don't see myself leaving for a long, long time. Obviously the weather's super nice. Very rarely does it get very cold. So I never had to like bundle up just to walk to class. USF is about an hour from the Gulf beaches, like Clearwater. I actually found that I really like going to Indian Rocks Beach instead because there's like almost always free parking and there's less tourists, less crowds there. USF is also about 20 minutes from downtown, which is super nice. I walked a ton on the river walk and Bush Gardens is literally two miles from USF's campus. Pro number six and my final pro is, this one might be a little bit like, debatable. Definitely leave a comment if you disagree because I'm trying to be hopeful this, with this one. Anyway, so this is like a, a semi pro, I guess. I think the athletics and school spirit are on the rise at USF. I know the hype around USF athletics, like right now, it's not super high. However, USF is really taking steps to improve its student sections. My best friend and another girl that was in my major, her name is Hannah Halili. She actually worked for the USF 
school newspaper and she posted an article about this company that USF essentially hired to come in and like create a student section and like a really cool student atmosphere at games. I'll link her article in the description so you can learn a little bit more about it. Also going to baseball games on like random weeknights at USF became one of my favorite things to do. It's just like so nice outside. I, I would literally bring my laptop in there and just do some homework while I was in the stadium and it was so nice. You get to watch the sunset, watch some baseball. It was really nice. Oh, also I wrote this down, but I forgot to mention it. So as of right now at USF, the on-campus football stadium is supposed to open sometime in 2026 or 2027. So that's really exciting too. But in the meantime, the games are being held at Raymond James, the Buck Stadium, which I know it's kind of a pain in the butt because you gotta drive there. However, like I think it's really cool the fact that we just get to go into Ray J and like you get free tickets as a student. So you can go like, it's like, obviously it's not a Bucks game, but it's like, you kind of get that whole atmosphere a little bit for free as a USF student. So that's pretty cool. That wraps up my new and improved pros and cons list. So again, if you haven't seen that first video, definitely go check it out. I talked about some other things over in that one. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you're interested to see like kind of what life is like at USF, I have a lot of vlogs up on my channel, just day in the life, week in the life type of vlogs, a move-in vlog. That one kind of popped off, honestly. I have a bunch of vlogs up on my channel that can kind of give you a glimpse into what life is like actually on campus, walking around, doing the, you know, the whole student thing. So definitely go check those out. I'll see you in the next video.